my name is Ariel, and today we're talking about how invasive pythons have impacted the Everglades. Release and escape Burmese pythons are now breeding in the wild, and their growing numbers may result in dire consequences for native wildlife and ecosystems in the Everglades. Let's take it to the field with Cindy for more information. Good evening. Welcome to Colloquium TV. I'm Savage Sin, and tonight's top stories are about invasive species, the Burmese python in the Everglades. Here's a bystander now to tell us more. Why, thank you, Savage. All right, now listen up, because these buggers are nasty news. The first Burmese pythons were introduced in the Everglades in the 1980s when Hurricane Andrew came through and wiped out an entire breeding facility. Now, they also have very high reproductive rates, and no natural predators, except for us humans, of course. That's why we need more of those hunters out there. And did you know that the FWC will not sanction anyone? You do not need a permit to hunt a python. All you need is a good gun and a good gut. So get out there. To find out more about the invasive Burmese python in the Everglades, we are going to go to our environmental specialist, Reagan. Hi, I'm Reagan Webb, and I'm here to give you some fast facts about Burmese pythons in the Everglades. According to the National Park Service, nowhere else in the world has a larger constrictor been introduced to a foreign area as a result of exotic pet trading. And did you know that the National Park Service reported the removal of 311 Burmese pythons from the Everglades in 2008? The Burmese pythons may reach a length of 26 feet and a weight of more than 200 pounds. The average size of a Burmese python removed in Florida is 8 to 10 feet long. Here's a video and a hand comparison to one of these massive serpents. Besides the fact that these pythons are an invasive species to the state of Florida, one of the biggest issues is related to the declining local wildlife. Researchers conducted a survey of how many live and dead animals were found on the road after dark over the course of eight years to determine just how much the species were decreasing. Raccoon observations dropped by 99.3%, possums dropped by 98.9%, and bobcats by 87.5%. The scientists saw no rabbits or foxes at all during this survey, showing how much their decline was over time. Chris Gillette, an animal expert at Everglades Holiday Park, was quoted saying, the only thing we could hope for is to have a cold snap come through. That's the only thing that's been shown to throw the population back but it also kills a ton of our native animals. We now return live to Cindy in the Everglades. Cindy? Savage Sin here. We are on a live hunt for the Burmese python. Let's take it to our hunter, John, over here. Let's see what he's got. Hello, sir. How are y'all doing? Any luck over here? Yes, ma'am. What we have here is a baby Burmese python here in the middle of the Everglades. Uh, He's about a year, maybe too old. Not much else on him. How much do you think that would be worth, sir? On the market, just based off his length, remember we do get $50 per four foot and then $25 per every foot after that. Um, just based off how long he is, I peg him no more than $75, $100 max, just because of the tone of his scales. It's a nice, pretty color there. Um, other than that though, it is, hell to try to come and find these things out here it is nothing but swamp and sticks and it's just muck it's do you, dirty do you feel it's fair the amount of money you get from them oh hell no all right these things can this is a baby he is just a little itty bitty baby all right these things will grow to over 15 20 feet long and take down an alligator take down a deer they take down everything and I, I feel they are too hard to find. They are too difficult to find. The females breed too fast. You're gonna find, if, if he's here, there's probably another 50 around in this same area. So what I'm saying is I just do not believe that the amount of money I'm getting for trying to go find and hunt these things down just to get them out of our precious Everglades is not enough. There you have it folks. Pay the hunters more money. Back to you in the studio. Next up, we have a video about how people are educating others how to catch these snakes. Um, I work with Florida Fish and Wildlife and the Nature Conservancy teaching the Python Patrol. It, you can see why it's difficult to catch them. Yeah. They, they'll get into cover like this and disappear. We just won't, we won't see them. No, he wants to find a hole like that. Oh, Whoop, give me a buddy. But he, he had him headed straight for it. He felt that cold air. People think that you can run them over. They survive a lot of those traffic strikes. Shooting them, if you have to destroy their head to kill them, they're, they're, these animals are tough. 
you know, we, we try to approach it ethically, as ethically as possible, but there's a lot of uncomfortable questions about are we capturing the humanity if they're just going to be euthanized in the end? And I think we can just say that we don't want to contribute to the suffering of an animal just because it's ultimately going to be, you know, destroyed. And, and but I mean, what's, what's the alternative? Do we have any realistic alternatives? People ask, well, why don't you just go out and hunt them down where the kind of terrain is inaccessible? We can look all the live long day and we still are not going to be able to see them all. We don't want to give up and say that there's no hope of eradicating them. Uh, we're unsure what's going to happen. Once they, perhaps they eat everything here, they may move on. We need to do what we can to work at removing Burmese pythons. And I don't think we're ever going to completely eliminate them, but manage a population. And that's why the Python Patrol is in place. So far, nothing is, we're not giving up. But so far, nothing is uh, proven effective. The overall message in this video from the National Park Service and from all of us is to help protect our Everglades and get out there and help the problem with these Burmese pythons. Next up, we have a video about how people are educating others how to catch these snakes. Thank you. This has been Colloquium TV. Good night. Savage Sin here again. We are on a live hunt for the Burmese python. Look over here, we have Hunter John. Let's go take a look. Hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> Just keep going. I'll cut it out. <laughs> We're not going to put that in the video. Wait, yeah, you're still filming. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's true.